ask that you please rise and address the flag on the east end of the gymnasium. Gentlemen, please put your hats as we pay tribute to this great nation of ours by playing our national anthem. Hello and welcome to the West Washington Senator live stream. We're here to bring you the regional finals matchup between the Lanesville Lady Eagles and the Tecumseh Lady Braves. Joined here by Titan. As we look to get the starting lineups going. On the scoreboard, visiting team will be the country, Lady Gray. And the home team will be the Rainville, Lady Eagle. And now the starting lineup for the Tecumseh, Lady Gray. And on guard, a 5'9 junior, number 15, Penelope Lemon. So the starters for both teams are to come see we have Flowers, Donahue, Oxley, Lemon, and Wilson. And for Lanesville, we have Gordon, Brumley, Sonner, Frazier, and Warner. Tecumseh took down Trinity Lutheran in a very good game uh, in the first game today, and Lanesville took down Vincent Reve in the second game of the day. We will have Wilson and Sonner during the tip-off. Wilson coming in at 5'11", Sonner coming in at 6 foot. And we are underway here with 
Lanesville Lady Eagles winning the tip as Crozier's got the ball for them. Crozier with it, gives it off to Brumley. Brumley now swings it onto the wing. Warner with the cross court passes a jump shot by Crozier and gets it to go. As the Lady Eagles strike first here, and now Tecumseh's got the ball. Flowers brings up the right sideline. Looks like Lenzel might be trying to trap out of it. Lemon gives it back, and now it's going to be taken away by Crozier. Crozier's going to bring it up the left side, get all the way to the block, put up the, the shot, and gets fouled, and we'll go to the line for two shots. And it looks like Lanesville is going to come out here firing. Getting aggressive early on. So Crozier's at the free throw line. The foul was on 15 women. Her first. Free throw is good, making a three to nothing ball game. Crozier's second shot is up and good. So Donahue will take it out, gives it into Oxley in the corner. Oxley throws the sideline for Lemon. Lemon bringing up the floor, gets it taken away by Warner. Warner now kicks it ahead for Crozier. Crozier drives inside, kicks it out. Gordon thought about the three-pointer, but instead will kick it back out for Crozier. Crozier swings it for Brumley. Now into the corner, Warner with it. cross court pass for Crozier into the corner for Gordon. Gordon puts up the corner three. It's good. And we will have a 30-second timeout called by Tecumseh. Yeah, and Lanesville is fired up coming into this game. Opening up a seven-point lead, and they look unstoppable. Tecumseh hasn't even got a shot off yet as Lanesville takes a seven-to-nothing lead. We're not even a minute into this game. Heck, I don't even think they crossed half court. I mean, Lanesville is smothering them. It's going to take a better effort here by Tecumseh to get in, back into this game. In the first game, Tecumseh found success giving the ball to Oxley down low or just giving her the ball anywhere, but if they can't cross half court, then they're not going to be able to get her the ball anywhere. Yeah, they're, they're definitely going to be looking to get Oxley involved, but first they got to get past the challenge of making it cross half court. So Donahue will take it out. She throws it in for Oxley. Oxley gives it back. Now Flowers has it. Ball's on the ground. Flowers able to pick it up. Flowers now trying to dribble around. She gives it off to Lemon. Lemon's guarded by Drumley. Now a double team comes. Flowers with it. Kicks it to the corner for Wilson. Wilson kicks it back out now for Flowers. Flowers guarded by Drumley. Flowers goes left. Bounce pass inside for Oxley. Oxley puts it up. No call on the block. And now Lensville will take it the other way. Drumley with it. Kicks it ahead for Crozier. Crozier drives inside. Puts up the left with the left hand. Gets it to go. Now the ball went flying all the way to half court. So... Referees blow it dead and will now set up this inbound pass. Donahue to take it out. Gets it in for Wilson. Wilson back to Donahue. Donahue now double teamed. Ball's on the ground. The foul is going to be called. And that's something that Tecumseh needs. They need, to, they need a few fouls to try and back off this aggressiveness by Langer. That foul was on Crozier, her first and the team's first as Wilson gets the ball and now gives it back to Donahue. Donahue dribbling right side. Looking for the middle. Tries to get there. It's going to be taken away again. Gordon with the ball. So Gordon now throws it inside to Sonner. Sonner turns, puts it up, and can't get it to fall. Oxley with the rebound. Oxley gives it off to Flowers. Flowers now dribbling the ball to four. Flowers goes left side for Lemon. Lemon now goes back to Flowers. Flowers dribbling right side, guarded by Crozier. Gets cut off, now cuts back middle, gives it off to Oxley. He puts it up with the left hand, no good. Rebounded by Wilson. Wilson puts it up, no good again. And in the battle for the rebound, it ends up in Flowers' hands for Tecumseh. Now Lemon with it on the wing. Lanesville looking to be in the zone here. Flowers puts up a corner three. It's no good. Battle for the rebound, and it is Tecumseh who gets it again. Flowers puts up the runner and gets it to go. Hectic play right there, but Tecumseh just sticking with it ends up getting the two points. Now the ball's in the short corner for Warner. Tries to throw a bounce pass inside. It's going to be taken away by Flowers. Flowers will now bring the ball to the floor. Crossing half court. Gives it off to Lemon on the left wing. Lemon now dribble, takes the dribble, thought about the shot. Now here's a corner three by Donahue. It's no good. Rebounded by Oxley, and she gets it to go. And Oxley is starting to get heated up here. Took that last rebound to Flowers, and now getting her own bucket. 
Now a kickball violation is called on 15 women. Will be Lanesville's ball. We have Brumley taking it out, throws it in for Gordon. Also, the country looks to be in a zone of their own as now Brumley's got the ball. He throws it inside to Sonner. Sonner turns, kicks it out, Crozier with it. That shot is up and it is good. Crozier with eight points already. So now Oxley gets it in, Lanesville in their press. Donahue with it now, throws the bounce pass for Oxley. Oxley now brings it up to four, kicks it out for Wilson. Wilson pump fakes, brings it back out. Donahue throws it inside to Oxley. Oxley turns, puts it up, and will be fouled. So Oxley will go to one for two shots. Foul is on Warner there. Her first. So Oxley at the free throw line. First shot is up and it is good. Oxley with one more shot here. Shot is up and also good. So now Crozier with the ball. Wilson out at the top of this 1-3-1 zone. Crozier dribbles down to the three-point line. Now retreats. Gets it back onto the wing. Brumley with it. Brumley looking for somewhere to go get the double team. It's going to be thrown still out of bounds. It will be a turnover. Kempsey's starting to match some of that intensity on defense that Lanesville's been playing with. So now Donahue with the ball. Throws to the middle for Flowers. Flowers turns. He's going to dribble the ball off the floor. Gets all the way to the block. Kind of loses it. Sauna with a good tip. And now Warner brings it up the floor. Warner gives it off to Gordon. Gordon looking inside. Gordon now throws it out for Brumley. Brumley kicks it across for Crozier. Crozier pass fakes inside. Now he's going to throw it into the corner for Warner. Warner goes left side. Now kicks it across for Brumley. Mid range jump shot is good off the bounce. So now we have Flowers with the ball, giving it off to Donahue. Kicks it off for Lemon. Lemon brings it up the sideline, loses it out of bounds, and it will be a turnover going back to Lanesville. Now substitution for Tecumseh is 24 McDonald. So Brumley now to take the ball out of bounds. Lanesville leads 13 to 6. Brumley now with it, throws it over the top for Crozier. Now into the corner, Gordon puts up another corner three. It's no good, rebounded by Wilson. Wilson gives it off to Flowers, and Flowers will bring it down the floor. Flowers kicks it ahead now for Wilson. Wilson takes a dribble in, kicks it back out. Now Wilson with it again. Wilson throws baseline. It's going to be tipped away and taken away by Lanesville. Warner now gives it off to Crozier as Crozier now brings it off the floor on the Flowers. Good move there, getting all the way inside. And now that pass is taken away. Donahue ended up with it, and now Flowers will bring it back again. Flowers, bounce pass inside to Oxley's taken away. Gordon with it. So now Gordon picks it ahead for Crozier. Crozier throws it inside for Warner. It's going to be out of bounds, and it will be Lanesville ball. So now we see Crozier taking the ball out of bounds. Crozier throws it up for Warner. Warner now kicks it into the corner for Brumley. Brumley looking inside at Sonner posting up. Now Warner drives inside, kicks it off to Sonner. Pump fake. One dribble, puts up a shot. It's no good, but a foul. Foul was on 24 McDonald, her first. So Sonner going to the free throw line. The first free throws of the game for Lanesville. This one is up and it is no good in and out. So Sonner with one more shot here, chance to make it an eight point game. It is also no good, rebounded by Donahue. And Donahue gives it off for Flowers who will bring it up to court. Wilson now with it. Wilson takes up to the three point line, kicks it back off to Flowers. Flowers goes to McDonald in the corner. McDonald now trying to dribble out of it, throws it up to Flowers, Flowers is able to get it. Now it's thrown to high post for Don, he dribbles in left hand and puts up a shot and he's fouled and will go back to the free throw line. 
And Tecumseh here is playing a much cleaner game after that 7 0 run early on. Put up a quick six, but got matched with another six by Langsville. So now Warner has two fouls. Donahue's first free throw is good. And now number 10, Kerr, will come in for Warner. So Donahue's still at the free throw line. Second shot is up, but it is no good. Rebounded by Sonner, giving it off to Gordon. So now Gordon brings it up to floor. Guard by Wilson here in the 1 3 1 zone. Now into the corner for Kerr. Kicks it out, Rumley with a three pointer. It's no good. Battle for the rebound as McDonald comes up with it, and a travel is going to be called. So it will be Lanesville ball underneath the basket. Crozier will take it out again. Crozier looking for somewhere to go. Throws it up for Kerr. Kerr is going to put up a three-pointer. It is no good. Rebounded by Wilson. Wilson now with two defenders on her. And now a travel will be called again. Looked like a lot of contact right there, but no foul call. As now Crozier will take it out again. Throws it in for Kerr. Kerr dribbles right side. is being guarded heavily by Flowers. And now a foul is going to be called. Flowers called for the foul. Now Gordon with another corner three. She's one for two. Now one for three. And now there's going to be a foul going for the rebound on 10 Kerr. Both teams are extremely physical here early on. So now Donahue to take it out. Gives it right into Wilson. Donahue gets it back. Donahue going to try to dribble up the sideline. Give it back to Wilson. Wilson kicks it across the flowers and a foul will be called on Crozier. Crozier now picks up her second foul. And now we have 22 Campbell coming in for Crozier. It'll be interesting to see if Lanesville kind of plays back after picking up all these fouls. So they get the ball into Oxley and she gives it off to Flowers. Now Oxley within the middle, kicks it ahead for Wilson. Wilson goes to McDonald in the corner. They throw it inside for Oxley. Oxley can't handle it. Now uh, Gordon will take it the other way. Gordon crossing the timeline, gives it off to Brumley. Brumley guarded by Wilson here. Looks like Tukunji is still in a little bit of a zone here. Now that pass in, gets into Gordon. Gordon puts up the jump shot. It's no good. Rebounded by Oxley. Giving off to Flowers. Flowers now pushes it ahead. Brings it up the right side. Throws it in the corner for Donahue. Throws it inside. Passes tip, but Oxley still gets it. Oxley puts it up. Puts up the shot. It's no good. Rebounded by Sonner. And now Campbell will take it the other way. We're under a minute to go in this first quarter. Campbell. He's now getting double team. Throws it over for Brumley. Now Kerr with it. Kerr gives it back to Brumley. Brumley tries to go right side and give it off to Campbell. Campbell now splits two defenders with the pass to Gordon. Gordon now steps it back out as she felt the triple team come on. She puts up the runner. It's going to be blocked. Wilson gets the rebound. And she'll give it off to Flowers who will bring it up. So Flowers goes behind the back. Good move there. Giving it off to Wilson. Wilson throws it inside for Oxley. Oxley's able to get it, kick it out for Flowers for the three. It is no good. And it will be rebounded by Kerr. And now a foul will be called on Flowers. That's going to be her second foul for Tecumseh. So now it looks like we have number 11, Ashton Green, coming in. Coming in for... 25 Oxley. So now Campbell will take it out, looking to get it to Kerr. Kerr's being taken away, gives it off to Brumley. Now Brumley goes back to Campbell. Campbell now dribbling left side, gives it off. Brumley puts up a three pointer. It is no good. Rebounded by Donahue with seven seconds to go in the quarter. Donahue brings it up the left side. He's going to get double teamed. Tries to throw up a shot, and a foul will be called on the shot. Oh, that's big. That was on 10, Kerr. That's her second foul. 
Uh, now we'll have three shots at the free throw line for Donahue. Well, Hainesville can argue the call all they want. She's clearly looking for a shot. First free throw's good. Probably wasn't going to be a good one considering she was double teamed, but she's looking for that half court shot. So Donahue now with two more shots. Second shot is up and good. So for Lanesville, they have 16 fouls made up by three players. Kerr has two fouls, Crozier has two fouls, and Warner has two fouls. Kerr st stays in the game. That free throw is no good in and out. Now Gordon with it. Gordon will try to throw up a full court shot, and it is no good, as that will be the end of the first quarter, where Lanesville leads 13 to nine. And this looks like it is gonna be a great game. And now we'll go to a commercial break. You are listening to West Washington Senator Center to Radio. We'll be right back. Expertise, resources, commitment. At Sullivan Financial, we offer a team approach to financial planning, offering you a broader scope of expertise than you will likely find in any one person. Clients are our main priority, which is why we work to understand your unique circumstances and ultimately create a distinctive plan that provides a roadmap for your financial journey. Located in Mitchell, Indiana, they can be reached at 812-849-2670. That's 812-849-2670. And we're back. We've got Lanesville leading here 13-9 over the Tennessee Lady Braves in Titan. Did the eventual first quarter, what'd you see? Well, Lanesville started off very strong, getting out to a 7 nothing lead, forcing a bunch of turnovers and getting pretty easy shots, but the out troubles really slowed them down as Crozier and Warner both had to exit the game in that first quarter with two fouls. And now Kerr, who came off the bench, has also picked up two fouls. As now we see Crozier and Warner back in the game. So if Tecumseh can attack those two players and get them out for an extended amount of time, then that can only improve their chances. Well, and especially Crozier, as she was a big part of that offensive output they had in the first quarter. Yeah, Crozier has eight of the 13 points right now as Tecumseh's got the ball. And Green is going to throw it straight inside for Oxley. Oxley tries to go baseline. Three people on her, puts up the shot, going to be blocked. Now the ball's going to be kicked in the backcourt. Battle for the ball as Crozier ends up with it. Throws off the bounce pass, going to be taken away by Donahue. Donahue now gives it off the flowers as Tecumseh can settle down a little bit here. So now Flowers with it, guarded by Crozier. Flowers going to spin back to the middle, bounce pass inside for Donahue. She drives inside, puts up the shot. It's no good, rebounded by Sonner. Sonner now gives it off to Brumley, and Brumley will take it the other way. Brumley kicks it ahead for Warner. Warner drives inside, kicks it out. Gordon thought about the three. Now Crozier will shoot the three. It is no good, but long, and a tip out, and um, Lensville controls it. And now that ball is tipped. And Gordon now gets the ball up top. So Lanesville got a little bit lucky right there, getting the ball to fall right into their players' hands. And now Gordon with it, trying to drive inside. Crozier will try another three-pointer. This one is no good. Rebounded by what looked like it was um, Warner, and a jump ball will be called. We'll stay with Lanesville. So Crozier now to take it out. Crozier throws it in for Brumley. Brumley now throws it in the post area for Sonner. They kick it out. Warner puts up a three-pointer. It is good. So now Flowers with it. Is going to kick it ahead for Green to avoid this press. Now Oxley with it. Bounce pass to Wilson. Now it's kicked back out. Flowers with it. Flowers guard by Crozier. Gives it off for Donahue. Donahue dribbles the right side. Gives it off to Green in the corner. And now Gordon... Gets a hand on the ball, but Oxley gets it. And now Wilson with the offensive rebound. Can't get that layup to go. And now Crozier's going to end up with the ball after Sonner got it out to her. Crozier pushing the ball ahead. And now we'll slow it down here. So now Wilson gets up to guard this 1 3 1 zone. And now a trap in the corner. Sonner with it, and a foul's going to be called. And that's on Flowers. That's going to be her third foul. So now they're going to leave Flowers out there even with three fouls. So Crozier to take it out, throws it in for Warner. 
Werner looking for somewhere to go, drives left side, kicks it out. Gordon will try another corner three, and that one is no good. That will be knocked out of bounds off of Crozier, and will be Tecumseh Ball. So Gordon now 25% on those corner threes that she's had. As now Flowers brings the ball to floor, throws it in the middle for Oxley. Oxley bounce pass inside McDonald with it, and she gets away at the fall. Good pass there by Oxley, getting the open bucket in the paint. It's now Brumley with it, giving it off to Gordon on the left wing, throws it in the high post for Warner. Warner, jab step, now steps back, good move there, but cannot get the shot to fall. And now a foul's going to be called on Crozier, and that's going to be her third foul. That's definitely big. Crozier will now exit this ball game again to the top. And now we are going to have a one and one not even halfway through this second quarter. We still have five and a half minutes to go in the second quarter and already we will see Tecumseh shoot a one and one. And Lanesville is, um, if Tecumseh fouls two more times, then Lanesville will be shooting one and one. So a lot of fouls here in this first half. Well, it's been a physical, aggressive ball game. Both sides are participating in it. I mean, first out of the one and one is good. Now, Ken Heichelbeck checks into the game. So, Roman now gets both free throws to go. She's got two on the game now. And we have a three point game here. Wayneville still out in front as now Kerr has the ball. Kerr is starting to get double teamed from the 1 3 1. Now Brumley kicks in the corner for Gordon. Gordon cross court pass for Kerr. Now in the short corner, Sonner puts up the shot. It is no good an air ball. McDonald with the rebound. Gives it off for Heichelbeck who just came in. She throws it in the middle for Oxley. Oxley get, bounces it off to Lemon. Now into the corner for uh, Donahue. And a travel will be called as Donahue tries to drive baseline. That's been the biggest problem so far for the come see. It's been the turnovers. Still a three point game, but we want to cut down on those. Going forward. And now we have 40 Sonner checking out of the game. The big for Lanesville. So now Kerr with the ball. Guard heavily by Lemon on the top of the 1-3-1. Kerr's now going to get it back. Going to the point for Brumley. Now a double comes. She kicks it out. Warner's with it. He's going to kick it out. Campbell picks up a three-pointer. It is good. Campbell with her first point of the game. As now Lemon's got the ball. Lemon drives middle, kicks it off for Oxley. Now Oxley will bring it up the floor, and a carry is going to be called on Oxley. Yeah, it looks like she couldn't decide if she wanted to pass that or keep on dribbling and turn over there again by Tecumseh. So now Kerr will bring the ball up the floor, met at half court by Lemon. Kerr stops, get, kicks it out. Campbell now throws it over the top for Kerr. Kerr now falls down, but still gets the pass off to Campbell. Now it's in the corner. It's going to be taken away. And now we have Heichelbeck trying to get out of the pressure. She now throws it in the middle for Oxley. Kicked in the corner for Lemon. Now it's back out. Don, who thought about the three, drives inside, puts up the shot. It is no good. Rebounded by McDonald. Puts it up, and it is also no good. Another offensive rebound, and it will be no good. And Don and who will go to the free throw line for two shots. And you see how much they're missing Sonner now after giving up three consecutive offensive rebounds. Be interesting to see how long they keep her out again. So that shot by Bonahue is good. That shot is also good by Donahue, giving her five on the game. And that foul right there was called on Warner, and now she has three fouls. So we have three players with three fouls already as there's a turnover. Now Heichelbeck will try to bring the ball up the floor. Heichelbeck throws it off for Lemon. Lemon looking inside at Oxley, now drives baseline. Now he's going to get double team, gets it out to Donahue, throws it inside to Oxley. And it's going to be tipped. McDonald gets it, puts up the shot, no good. Rebounded by Warner. And now a foul is going to be called. Fouls on 24, McDonald here second. So 
So now here goes Waynesville as Brumley's now got it. Brumley goes left, takes it in the corner. Campbell puts up a three-pointer. It is no good. Offensive rebound as Kerr gets it. And now a foul is going to be called. That was on 10 high school back there first. So Kerr at the free throw line now. First shot of the 1-1 one -one is no good, so Tecumseh gets a stop right there in a sense. So now a high back with the ball. Throws it inside for Oxley. Oxley puts up the jump shot. It is no good. Bounces out as Gordon gets the rebound and will bring it up to court. Gordon kicks it ahead for Kerr. Kerr drives inside, puts up the layup, and will be fouled. That was on 24 McDonald, and now she has three fouls. So four players in this game have got three fouls, and we are in the first half. Yeah, and now definitely he did. I mean, both teams cannot keep up this pace of fouls. Looks like Selma will finally check back in. Kerr misses the first free throw. Sauna will come in for Warner, who has three fouls. So now Kerr with one more shot at the free throw line. It is good. And now Heichelbeck throws it away right there. She was just about to travel. And now Gordon's got the ball in the short corner. Gordon looking inside, he's gonna drive baseline, get all the way to the basket, put up the layup, it's no good. Rebounded by Sonner, who puts that up and gets it to go. Sonner with her first two of the game. So now Donahue with it. Donahue's gonna try to dribble it up the sideline. Tries to pick it up and now throws it right away and now Kerr will take it down and shoot it on the left block and a good block right there by Heichelbeck. What a play by Heichelbeck. Getting back and getting the chase down the ball. So now Campbell will take the ball out of bounds. Campbell having trouble. He's going to throw it up for Kerr. Kerr guard by Lemon. Kerr's now going to drive inside, gets into the paint. And now a foul is going to be called. That foul was on 15 Lemon, her second foul. So now Kerr will go back to the free throw line. So Kerr's first shot of the 1-1 one -one is also no good. She's gone 1 for 4 on the past um, 4 free throws, but missing the front end of 2 1-1. One -one. So now the ball is into the short corner for McDonald. It's kicked out for Lemon. Lemon gives in the high post for Oxley. Oxley bounce pass for McDonald. It's going to be blocked away by Sonner. And now it will be a jump ball. It will be Tecumseh ball. Beautiful defensive play there by Sonner. They're getting that ball. Substitution is going to be number 35, Morgan Wilson. And it looks like McDonald might be down. McDonald, who has uh, two points in this game right now, is down on the floor. It looked like number 35, um, Wilson, just checked into the game, so she might be coming in for her. And we'll get a short little injury timeout here. We'll hit you with a 30-second commercial and be back in a sec. I think of this as a high school weight room. It's more like a high school classroom. I'm learning how to manage my time here. I'm learning that it's important to have goals and that it takes persistence and commitment to reach them. And I'm learning that the best way to lead is by example. Indiana High School Sports. They're more than just a game. Come and see me play. <laughs> 
And we're back. We've got Langeville leading here, 22-15. About two minutes left to go in the second quarter. And now McDonald is getting up, and I think they will walk her to the locker room. Now both teams looking to come out of this timeout. So now it will be Tecumseh ball as women will take the ball underneath the basket after the jump ball was called. So women now looking to throw it in. Is going to toss it up for Donahue. Donahue pump fakes, puts up the shot. No good. A lot of contact there, but no call. Women kicks it out. And now Wilson puts up the mid-range jumper. It's good. And we have a five-point game now with under two minutes to go in this first half. Kerr brings it up. And now she's going to end up throwing it away. Woman now with it. She comes in now um, crossing half court and a timeout will be called. A 30 second timeout will be called by Tecumseh. So usually when you see a player pick up two fouls in the first half, you'll usually try to sit them a while to, um, so they don't pick up a third. But in this game, having two fouls is not any different from having one foul. Like, anytime a player gets called for a foul, it's just like adding, they're just adding up at this point as, um, we have eight to nine in the foul category. Yeah, it's definitely been a physical matchup, and that's been big for Lanesville. Part of the reason they haven't been able to grow their lead is one of their best scores, Parker, has been on the bench most of the game due to foul trouble. As both teams look to come out of this timeout playing strong, will be Tecumseh Ball taking it out on the sideline. Donahue will throw it in the backcourt. Heichelbeck with it, now getting off to Lemon. Lemon now goes on to the, into the corner for Wilson, now into the post. O Oxley puts up the shot, it's no good, an offensive rebound. Donahue with it, puts it up, and a foul will be called. So Donahue will go back to the free throw line. So Gordon's going to be called for the foul there. That's just her first, surprisingly. Yeah, he's one of the few players who have had a foul so far. Don, whose first free throw is good. Chance to make it a three-point game right here. And that free throw is good. So now, Lenko bringing the ball before Kerr with it. Wilson out guarding the top players. So now, trap in the corner, kicks it out, Kerr with it. Now we have Gordon in the short corner. Gordon now is going to get double teams. He kicks it out for Kerr. Kerr drives around. He's now going to kick it off, and now Kerr gets it back. He's going to put up a three-pointer. It is short. May have been hit, and Drummond is going to end up getting the rebound. Now it's in the corner for Campbell, and Ox Oxley gets in front of the ball, and it will give it off to Heichelbeck, who will bring it up. We're under a minute to go now in this first half. Donahue with it on the wing. Throws it into the short corner for Oxley. Oxley gives it off to Wilson. Wilson kicks it out for Lemon. He's going to put up a three-pointer. It is good. And that's a huge tie game. Under a minute here to go in the second quarter. So now Kerr with the ball. Kerr's going to try to go on the sideline. Can't get there. Now Brumley's got it. As Lundgren tried to call a timeout right there, but... Official didn't hear Coach Hinton. So now here's a three-point shot. It should be huge. It's no good. Long rebound. Brumley ends up with it. Shoots the corner shot. It is also no good. Oxley tries to get the rebound, and it goes out of bounds with 17 seconds to go in the half. So now Campbell to take the ball out. Campbell having trouble. And that will be five seconds. Good defense right there by Tecumseh. And momentum has officially shifted here. You can hear this Tecumseh crowd getting loud. So Donahue's going to throw it in for Lerman. 15 seconds to go in the half. Donahue gets it back. Gives it off to Heichelbeck. Heichelbeck crosses half court. Gives it off to Oxley. Oxley puts it up and it's going to be blocked away out of bounds. Yeah. 
Now some discussion here. I definitely thought that was blocked away. I don't think Oxley would have just shot it behind the backboard like that. But apparently she did. That's what they're going to say at least. I definitely think there was some contact there. I think that was either a foul or she got all ball and got the block out of bounds. It's now with just three seconds. Kerr with it's going to be kicked with 2.8 seconds. Now Lanesville will have a chance here at a buzzer beater with under three seconds and this could really shift the momentum back to Lanesville. So Grumley to take it out. Grumley looking for someone to go, gives it off to Campbell. Campbell turns, puts up the deep three-pointer. It is no good and that will be the end of the first half. We are tied at 22. And you know Tecumseh has to feel good tying that ball game up after starting off on the bad side of the 7-0 deficit. Tying it up, you feel like this is definitely your ball game to win. Looking here at the foul trouble at halftime, um, for Tecumseh, McDonald and Flowers both have three fouls. Lemon has two fouls. Heichelbeck has one. For Lanesville, Crozier and Warner have three fouls each. Um, Kerr has one and Gordon has one. For points, for Tecumseh, McDonald had two, Flowers had two, Donahue had seven, Oxley had four, Lemon had five, and Wilson had two. For Lanesville, Campbell had three, Kerr had one, Gordon had three, Rumble and Sonner both had two, Crozier, who didn't even get to play a whole lot due to foul trouble, still had eight points, and Warner had three points. And that's been huge for this Lady Eagles team is they haven't been able to score as much because two of their best scores have been on the bench due to foul trouble. Well, we will now head to a couple of commercial breaks and come back for the second half. Gates, Carnegie, Rockefeller, I'm not. Generous, caring, rich in spirit, I am. You don't have to be a person of great wealth to make an impact. When caring individuals give through a flexible, creative, capable organization known as a community foundation, our philanthropic potential is unlimited. As your local community foundation, we provide you the opportunity to permanently support the causes you care about both near and far. We do this by protecting and administering permanent funds through thoughtful grant making to improve the quality of life in the community we serve. Simply put, Donors who give through a community foundation build sustainable, permanent funds called endowments through contributions, big and small, to support organizations they care about most, forever. Through the generosity of our many donors and the responsible, informed investment of permanent funds, we will increase our grant-making ability for the benefit of our community for generations to come. All we need is you. What causes are you passionate about? What organization matters most to you? We can help you ensure your charitable interests are supported forever. Donors can give to an existing endowment or establish their own. Some choose to give now, while others make their gift later through their will or estate plan. To learn what your options are, talk to your community foundation. We're here to help you reach your philanthropic goals. If you love our community, let's leave our little corner of the world a bit better than we found it. Not just today, but for future generations too. The Washington County Community Foundation has been making our home a terrific place to live, work, and play since 1993 through the generosity of donors just like you. Why? Well, just like you, we also really love our community. Is your ride not as reliable as it used to be? Eddie Gilstraps is the place to go. With 80 years in the auto industry, we know how to get things done. At Eddie Gilstrap Motors, we have an unbeaten level of commitment to buyers. Unmatched customer service, a wide array of new and used inventory, and various financing options are just a few of the ways in which we serve our customers. Give us a call at 877-227-9421. That's 877-227-9421. 9421 or just visit our website. Today, while also rocking out with some of the classics, there are also exclusive interviews with some of the West Washington's head coaches during their seasons, breaking down the best of the upcoming matchups. 
and there's more programming to come, so stay tuned with WWSR being available on the school website, Alexa, or your favorite device. And for those interested, sponsorship slots are available. In 2012, the Washington County Community Foundation began working on its next big initiative, Education Matters. The goal of Education Matters is to increase the educational attainment of adults residing in our county. The initial focus has centered on adults with some college and no degree. With the assistance of scholarships and a peer mentoring program, the foundation began helping adults return to college to complete their degree or obtain a certification in 2013. Realizing that strength lies in numbers, Washington County partnered with Clark, Floyd, Harrison, and Scott Counties to create Education Matters Southern Indiana. This initiative continues to build. It's time for the Commissioner's Corner, an exclusive weekly conversation about Indiana high school sports with the Commissioner of the IHSAA, Paul Neidig. Now for an up-to-the-minute report about what's happening in the constantly changing world of high school sports, here's Coach Bob Lovell with Commissioner Paul Neidig. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Bob Lovell. This is our weekly conversation with the Commissioner of the IHSAA, Paul Neidig. And Paul, we are in Championship mode as we speak. Uh, regional round for girls basketball, swimming, diving, wrestling. Um, this is a busy, busy time for everyone and an exciting time for everybody involved. It is. It is. Uh, you know, just met with the staff this morning, coach, and you know, we're just they're they're sitting there and they're tweaking this and tweaking that and solving you know <laughs> right. uh, little problems along the way. You know, you know, you think about it, it's a, it's a pretty big undertaking that that you march 407 schools through four levels of the tournament to get them to the the crescendo when they can celebrate a state championship. So there's a lot of excitement here. You know, I. Uh, you know, it's, it's it's a good time of year to be in Indiana and celebrate student athletes. Well, it really is, and and I also think, and I, we've talked about this, I think, before, but uh, I remember many many years ago when I was in high school, you wouldn't have you didn't have girls regionals sectionals, you didn't have girls championships, and this time of year and the fifth of Title IX, sometimes we lose sight of all the things that were done and all the people who did great things, laid the foundation for these young ladies in this generation to be able to have the opportunities they have. Yeah, and that's exactly right. You know, we uh, did an interview with a, a, a younger athlete here recently, and, you know, the, the message that that younger athlete was, and they were, they were uh, rightly so, a little not as versed in Title IX. But then I got to thinking about that. Isn't that a wonderful thing that we have a girl that grew up in participation that just participated and didn't have to worry about not having access to sport like uh, people did years ago? And, you know, we can always get better, and we always will. But, uh, you know, the fact that that, that student-athlete was able to participate in a world and in a country like ours and, and really didn't – feel the effects of, the, of uh, not being able to participate like the, her uh, predecessors did years ago. We're talking with the commissioner of the IHSAA, Paul Nighting. And Paul, we mentioned, so you're embarking, as you uh, noted, wrestling, swimming, regional uh, basketball for girls. All of these um, are held in some of the greatest venues in the country. And we've talked about this multiple times. But it's an added bonus. If you're a student athlete in the state of Indiana, when you get to the championship level of your sport, you're going to be competing in world-class facilities that world-class athletes have used. And uh, I think that uh, another reason why the IHSA stands out in its uh, championship opportunities for men, for boys and girls. Hey, you know, Bob, we're so fortunate. And I've said this all along, and I'll always say this: we're fortunate to be in Indiana. It's just a, it's an yep. incredible place to live, to grow up, and to celebrate. You know, we've we've not been called the amateur sports capital of the world for um, no reason. And you know, as I walk into the auditorium on Saturday or Friday night and watch student athletes um, participate on the campus of IUPUI, and I look up on that wall and I see those great Olympians that have walked through that building and they're mm -hmm. winning mm -hmm. Olympic gold. You know. Uh, incredible facility, incredible place to show states their skills, and then we simply jump right out of that. Then we go to Game Bids Field House, the home of the Pacers and the Fever, and we're going to, 
we're going to pack that 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 field house from the floor to the ceiling with people that want to be fans of wrestling, and it's an incredible event. And you know, we're going to do that on Friday and Saturday next week. And you know, again, it's we get to do it. Our kids get to do it in first class, world class venues. So have you uh, arranged for the weather to be better this week than it was last week? Or we're counting on you to, to make that happen for us. Coach, I always put a call in to old Mother Nature. I, <laughs> I put my request in early. <laughs> and, you know, sometimes that uh, I've been lucky with that request. I get what I ask for. And other times, you know, other things take priority. And, you know, so those kids wanted a snow day and they wanted to go sledding down a hill. So that took priority last weekend. But we figured out a way to get through it all. Thanks for listening to The Commissioner's Corner with IHSAA Commissioner Paul Neidig and Coach Bob Lovell. And thank you for your continued support of the high schools in your community. And we're back. We've got a tie game here, 22-22. As we get looking to start the second half, I'd like to thank all you lovely people for joining us. So Titans, what did you think of that first half? Well, both teams were very aggressive as Lanesville came out trying to force a bunch of turnovers, but um, Tecumseh made up for that aggressiveness by getting a bunch of offensive rebounds, which is something that they've done very well throughout this entire game. Both teams were definitely physical. Nine to nine was the final foul count of that first half. Each team has a pl two players with three fouls. McDonald and Flowers for Tecumseh have three fouls. And for Lanesville, Crozier and Warner have three fouls. Now Crozier is back in and she's got the ball. She splits two defenders here, but the ball's going to end up being on the ground and it will be a jump ball and it will be Tecumseh ball. And that's a big opening possession there for Tecumseh to be able to stop them on defense and get the ball back. It's now Flowers with the ball. She was out for a good portion of the first half. So now Lemon with it, gives it back to Flowers. Flowers throws for Wilson in the corner. Wilson looking inside, kicks it back out. Flowers brings it back to the middle, gives it off to Lemon. Lemon goes back to Flowers. Lanesville playing some good defense right now, not letting them get the ball inside. Wilson now looking inside. So Tecumseh swinging the ball around top, looking to get it in for Oxley or Wilson. And now the ball's gonna be tipped out of bounds and will stay with Tecumseh. Now Lemon will take it out. Lemon is going to throw it in for Oxley. Oxley gets past Gordon. Almost falls down, but um, gets it out. And now Flowers with it. Flowers guard by Crozier. Back to Lemon. Lemon goes back to Flowers now. Flowers goes on the both into the corner. And now cross court pass here. Lemon with it. Uh, Lemon's going to go into the corner for Oxley. Oxley looking inside, throws it in there for Donahue. Donahue pump fake, puts up the shot. It will be blocked away by Sonner. Sonner gets the rebound, but Donahue takes it right back and puts it up and will be fouled. That's Sonner's first foul. Yeah, and she's one of those few players that we had that did have a foul, but... Looks like everyone's going to get at least one tonight here. Don, whose free throw is no good off the front of the rim. And with this next free throw, Tecumseh has a chance to take their first lead of the game. And it is good. So now Crozier will bring the ball off the floor. First time Lanesville has trailed today. That pass is going to be thrown up for Warner. Warner now dribbles inside, gets all the way into the paint, kicks it out. Gordon puts up a corner three. It is no good, but an offensive rebound as Crozier comes flying through to get the ball. Crozier throws on the wing for Brumley. Brumley kicks it back to Crozier. Crozier with the ball up top, drives inside, and that's going to be kicked by Flowers. He's now Brumley to take it out on the sideline, throws it in for Warner. Warner with a little bit of a double team, splits two defenders, looks inside, kicks it out. That's going to be kicked into the backcourt. So Brumley with it. And now uh, Crozier with it. Crozier drives inside, kicks it out for Gordon. Gordon put, puts up another corner three, and this one's good. So now 
Now Flowers brings the ball up the floor after Lanesville regained the lead. Wilson with it in the corner, steps back, thought about the shot, gives it in for Oxley. Oxley pump fake, puts up the shot, it's no good. It may have been blocked by Sonner. Sonner has played some great defense down low today. She really has, and she's made Oxley a near non-factor in this entire game with her stellar defense. That shot right there is good by Warner, but she's now got five points. And now just like that, Langer's up by four. So Flowers now brings it up. Gets guarded by two people there for a second. Gets it out for Lemon. Lemon now gives it into the corner for uh, Donahue. Donahue cross court pass for Flowers. Flowers comes down with it. Flowers goes in the corner now for Oxley. Oxley throws it in for Donahue. Donahue stops, dribbles, kicks it out for Lemon. Now into the corner for Wilson. Wilson looks inside, gives it to Oxley. He throws it down low. And that shot will be no good. Offensive rebound by Donahue. Puts it up again and it is no good, but a foul called. On Sauna, her second. Donna, who now at the free throw line. That shot is good. And now she's got a chance to double digits right here. Donahue's shot is up and it is good. So three minutes gone here in the third quarter and Lanesville leads 27 to 25. Brumley with it. Brumley guarded by Wilson right there. Now Sonner with it puts up the shot. Can't get it to fall. And that's going to be rebounded by Tecumseh as Oxley ends up with the ball. Giving it off to Flowers now. Flowers now with the ball near half court. Guarded by Crozier. Flowers throws in the middle for Donahue. Donahue puts up the shot, no good. Gets her own miss, puts it up again, and gets it to go. So now we're tied again. So now Crozier bringing the ball to the court, crossing half court. Wilson on her. Crozier gives it off. There's a three point try by Brumley. It is no good. Long rebound. And Lemon gets it. She gets double teamed. And now a foul is going to be called on Lemon, her third. It's now Brumley taking it out, gives it in to Crozier. Crozier now throws in the corner for Brumley. Brumley now tries to get out of the corner and will be out of bounds. I'm not really sure what the idea there was on that pass for Brumley. She's kind of trapped there in the corner, not sure what she would have been able to do with it. So now Flowers with it, throws it in for Donahue. Donahue, good pass down low for Oxley, and she gets it to go. And now a timeout called by Lanesville will be a full timeout as Tecumseh has got a two-point lead halfway through this third quarter. You're listening to West Washington Center live stream. We'll head to a commercial break. Expertise, resources, commitment. At Sullivan Financial, we offer a team approach to financial planning, offering you a broader scope of expertise than you will likely find in any one person. Clients are our main priority, which is why we work to understand your unique circumstances and ultimately create a distinctive plan that provides a roadmap for your financial journey. Located in Mitchell, Indiana, they can be reached at 812-849-2670. That's 812-849-2670. And we're back to come see here with the lead, 29 to 27. And this has been a big comeback by Tecumseh. They started off the game down 7 to nothing, but they got back in it, and now they've got a little lead here, up to you. So now Brumley will take it out for Lanesville, giving it in to Crozier. Crozier now will bring it up to four. Wilson at the top of the 1-3-1, something that Tecumseh's ran this entire game. Now Romans with it, throws it inside for Gordon. Gordon puts it up and it is no good. Offensive rebound by Sonner and she gets it to go. 
now Lemon to take it out, getting it into Donahue. Donahue tries to dribble up the sideline, throws it back to Lemon. Lemon now crossing half court, looking for somewhere to go. And now he's going to give it off to Flowers. Flowers now gets double teamed, gives it off to Lemon. Lemon th goes to the corner for Wilson. Cross court pass here. Flowers picks up a three pointer. It is no good. May have been tipped. And they know they say it will be tipped. It will be Tecumseh Ball. Good call there by the official to notice the tip and give them the right call. So now Don who gets it, throws it off. And Oxley puts it up. It's no good. Offensive rebound for Don who puts it up. No call there. And now and now went for the jump ball and didn't get it. So now Crozier bringing the ball up the floor. Gives it off for Br Brumley. Crozier now throws it inside for Sonner. Sonner puts up the shot. It is no good. In and out. And rebounded by Oxley. So now Flowers crossing half court. Winesville still in their 2-3 zone it looks like. Now Donahue puts up the shot and gets it to go. 14 points for her. And Tecumseh's got the lead again. So Crozier brings it up the floor, gets past Wilson. He's going to slow it down and bring it back out. Now throws it in the corner for Warner. Warner looking down, down low and now kicks it back out. Crozier now drives left side, bounce pass inside for Gordon. Gordon turns, puts it up. It is no good. Rebounded by Donahue. Donahue gives it off to Flowers now. So Flowers now crossing half court. Flowers looking to give it off and now gets it to Don who good pass inside for Oxley and gets it to go. And now a 30 second timeout will be called by Lanesville. And you gotta love the passion here of Tecumseh. They are screaming, shouting, everything the second they get a lead. So now we have Tecumseh with a four point lead as they lead 33 to 29. One thing we haven't seen though is there are many fouls this half as now it is only two to one in the foul ca category. Definitely not as much as we saw in that first half. I think both teams kind of recognized that they were in danger of being in heavy foul trouble and they kind of cut down on the pressure and decided not to press it. We have two minutes to go here in the third quarter, so we'll see if Tecumseh can build on their lead or if Waynesville can um, regain the lead. It'll definitely be interesting to see. These two teams are so evenly matched. This one's going to come down to the wire. So now we have Wilson up trying to guard Crozier full court. And now Brumley will get it, and Brumley will take it up the court. Brumley, guard by Wilson with Lemon right there. Crozier now with it. Crozier takes a few dribbles, puts up the mid-range jump shot. It is good. Crozier now with 10 points. And now Flowers brings it up. Flowers crosses half court, spins back middle. Tries to throw it off to a teammate and gets taken away as Kerr will now bring it up. Kerr puts up the layup and gets it to go. So now we have a tie game. Now Donahue with it, throws it off for Oxley. Oxley dribbles inside, stops, puts up the fading shot, it bounces in. These two teams are just going blow for blow with each other. It is. So now Brumley with it. Brumley tries to throw it off and it will be knocked out of bounds by Tecumseh. So Brumley now to take the ball out of bounds. Brumley throws it in for Kerr. Kerr gives it off to Crozier. Crozier now looking down low, gets it to Warner. Warner kicks it out. Kerr for the three-pointer. It is no good. Rebounded by Donahue. Donahue now is going to give it off to Lemon, and Lemon might bring it up the floor, and now she kicks it off to Flowers. Flowers crossing out court now. Under a minute to go in this third quarter. And that pass is going to be knocked out of bounds. It will be will stay the comfy ball. So now Flowers to take the ball out of bounds. Flowers throws it in and it's going to be tipped out of bounds again and it will be now some debating right here. From my viewpoint it looked like Oxley tipped it out but 
They'll give it back to Tecumseh. So now Flowers to take it out on the sideline. Flowers is going to throw it in for Oxley and give it right back. So now Crozier is on Flowers. Flowers looking somewhere to go, gives it off onto the wing for Wilson. Now Oxley with it in the corner, throws it up top for Flowers. Flowers drives inside, puts up the runner. It is no good, but a foul. That was on 25 1 and her fourth foul. And that's a pretty big one right there. Flowers, first free throw is up, and it is good. And now 15, Gordon comes in with the 25 corner. And now Heichelbeck will get the shooter if this shot is made. And it is no good. Gordon gets the rebound and now has it taken away by Wilson. Wilson tries to go up with it. A foul will be called. And they will say it will be on the floor. Kerr just picked up her third foul. And now 11 Green will come into the game. Coming in for 15 women. So Heichelbeck will take it out. Heichelbeck throws it in for Oxley. Gets it to go. May have even been fouled. That's so a big play there. It stands the lead. Largest lead of the game and now a kickball violation. So Tecumseh with a five point lead. Now 22 Campbell comes in, coming in for 40. Sonner is, um, might just be getting some more offense right here in this last 10 seconds. It's not Brumley taking it out, gets it in for Crozier. Eight seconds to go now. Crozier kicks out for Brumley. Crozier now gets it back, thought about the three. Puts up the mid-range jumper, it is no good. Rebounded by Heichelbeck, and that will be the end of the third quarter where Tecumseh leads 38 to 33 as Tecumseh came out and played very well in this third quarter. You're listening to West Washington Center Live Stream. We'll head to a commercial break. Hi, I'm Matt Wolford, president of the IHSAA Foundation, and we need your help. We need your help so the youth of our community can develop advanced leadership skills. We need your help giving high school administrators and coaches the instruction and insight they need to be better role models and teachers. To learn more or to make a tax-deductible contribution, go to IHSAAFoundation.org. You'll not only be contributing to the foundation of the IHSAA, you'll be contributing to the foundation of our community. Never miss a big game by downloading the IHSAA TV app for free on any device. For your iPhone or Apple TV, check the App Store. On your Android or Android TV device, load up the Google Play Store. Have a Roku or Amazon Fire Stick? We have the app for you. Check us out on Facebook Live, Twitter, or YouTube Live by searching for IHSAA TV. Or as always, click to IHSAATV.org for quick and easy access to your favorite IHSAA live and archived events. And we're back, getting ready to start the fourth quarter here. To come see leads 38-33 over the Lensville Lady Eagles. And it's been a good one here so far. It'll be an intense fourth quarter, that's for sure. So now Brumley will take it out on the sideline, getting it in for Crozier. Crozier guarded by Wilson in the backcourt. Kerr now with it. Kerr looking for somewhere to go. Wilson all over her as now Crozier gets it. Crozier splits two defenders, bounce pass inside, balls on the ground, and Gordon ends up with it. And now a foul is going to be called. The foul is on 25 Oxley. That's just her first foul. So now Campbell and Kerr both check out with Sauna going back in. And Warner is back in. Warner has four fouls. Crozier now throws it up for Gordon. Gordon gets it. Gordon now gives it to Crozier coming up. 
Bozier now going onto the wing for Warner. Warner cross court pass for Brumley. He puts up a three pointer. It is no good. Oxley with the rebound. So now we have Flowers bringing it up the court. A chance for Tecumseh to extend their five point lead. So Flowers now goes on the wing for Wilson. Wilson looking inside. Gives it in to Oxley at the high post. Throws it in to Donahue. Is taken away. And now Crozier takes it up the floor. Crozier takes it to the right side. Now Crozier looking to get it over to Brumley and does now into the corner for Sonic. Sonic throws it inside. Good pass. And Warner misses the layup. Offensive rebound. And misses another layup. And um, Tecumseh ends up with the ball. And that was a pretty big play there. To miss both layups. I mean, those could be pretty vital later on in this game. Now a good pass inside. Donahue puts it up. No good. And now a jump ball. It will go to Tecumseh. As Lanesville fans wanted to foul right there. Yeah, they definitely don't seem too happy, but that's the game of basketball for you. So now Lemon with the ball up top. And now we have Flowers with it up at half court. Flowers gets a screen. Crozier knocks down Donahue. Donahue's slow to get up. And now Lemon with it. Lanesville playing ultra aggressive. You can see why they have all those fouls. Donahue puts it up and gets it to go. It's a huge bucket by Donahue. Now a seven point lead. As Crozier's got it again. Crozier throws it in the corner for Gordon. Gordon throws it inside straight to Oxley. So now Flowers with it with six minutes to go in the game and Tecumseh with a seven point lead. So now Flowers with it, it's gonna get a screen. Throws it inside, it's gonna be taken away by Gordon. Good job by her to keep it in bounds as now Crozier's got it, gives it off for Brumley. Brumley throws it ahead, it's gonna be tipped and will be recovered by Lanesville. Warner now kicks it out, now Crozier with a three point try. This is big and she gets it. She's now got 13 points. She's now making it a four point game. She's now Flowers, it will be a blocking foul on number four, Crozier, her fourth foul. And that is also huge. And now her and Campbell will check in. Especially since that sends Crozier back to the bench. She's Crozier, had a great offensive night. She yeah, she just hit in, that big three right there. But she's been in foul trouble, which has kept her out most of this game. So now Flowers bringing the ball up. Gets, now gets double team balls on the ground. And now Lemon running up and is going to get called for the foul. And now Lemon has four fouls. Foul number 15. So now Lanesville chance to cut this lead in half or make it a one point game with a two of the three. So Rumley throws it in. Warner drives inside, picks up the runner. It is no good rebounded by Wilson. Wilson gets it off to Flowers. And now Flowers will bring it up. Five minutes to go in the game. Wilson with it. Gives it to Oxley in the middle. Bounce pass. And now a good pass inside. Don who gets fouled. Now will be on Sauner, her third. So Donahue will go back to the free throw line. She's got 16 points on the game. Now a timeout is called by Lanesville. It will be a 30 second timeout. So now for Lanesville, we see Crozier and Warner both with four fouls. Sauner just picked up her third, Kurz had her third, and Gordon was now with just one foul. For Tecumseh though, Lemon, who wasn't really in foul trouble in the first half, now has four fouls. Flowers has done a good job with only three fouls, and McDonald had three fouls, but she left the game with an injury earlier in the game. Yeah, and I mean, it's going to be big if Lanesville has both Sauner and Kurz in foul trouble. And they're two of their better players, and they've had great games thus far, but foul trouble could negate most of that. Sonner with only four points, but she has played some great defense at times on Oxley and um, Donahoe down low. Oh, I was thinking this may be the 
best defensive performance I've seen all season. We watched Oxley dominate that good Trinity Lutheran team, and she has, for the most part, held Oxley in check. It's now Donahue at the free throw line. First shot is good. And now Heichelbeck comes into the game, coming in for women. So Donahue back at the free throw line. One more shot. Chance to make it a six-point game. Shot is up and no good. Rebounded by Warner. Warner now brings it up the floor, kicks it ahead to Kerr. Kerr will now slow it down, give it off to Brumley. Brumley now looking for somewhere to go. Brumley backs it out. Now throws it in the corner for Campbell. Campbell puts up a three-pointer. It is good. Campbell now with six points. Flowers with it, gives it off to Heichelbeck, which brings it up the sideline. That pass will be tipped out of bounds, and it will somehow be Lanesville ball. And now 15 uh, women comes in the game for Heichelbeck. So now Warner will get it, giving it right back to Brumley. Two-point game now as Runsville's got themselves right back in it. Sonner now with it, but it's going to be taken away, and Flowers ends up with it. Flowers, good crossover move. Looking inside, gets it to Oxley. Oxley turns right, gets all the way to block, puts it up, and gets it to go. So now Brumley will bring the ball back up to four. Lanesville trailing by four with four minutes to go in the game. Now that pass into the corner, and a foul is going to be called. I believe that was Donahue who tried to get the steal. And both ladies a bit slow to get up. Looks like Donahue's still down. And Tecumseh really needs Donahue. Oh, Donahue, she's got 17 points on the game. Yeah, she's done a good job picking up some of that slack that actually hasn't been able to put up on offense, but Donovan has taken advantage of all the attention they've given Oxley and put it into good use. Donna who just picked up her first foul. And now Frazier is back in and she will take it out of bounds, throwing it in to Kerr. Kerr looking to get it back to Crozier and does. Crozier now with a crossover, tries to get inside, bounce pass off of Warner. Warner kicks it back out for Crozier. And now we have Campbell with it. Campbell throws it inside for Warner. He's going to dribble inside, kick it out. Campbell with another three-pointer. It is no good. Rebounded by Crozier, who will bring it out. Crozier puts up a three. This is big, and it is no good. Rebounded by Oxley. Oxley now gives it off to Flowers. So now Flowers with it on the left side of the floor. Crossing half court, gives it off to Donahue. Donahue now looking in the corner, giving it off to Wilson. Wilson holding in the corner, now kicks it back out. Flowers with it up top, gives it off to Lemon. Lemon looking inside, now kicks for now will dribble it back out. And now a timeout will be called. It will be a full timeout called by the Lady Braves, so we will head to a quick commercial break. Is your ride not as reliable as it used to be? Eddie Gilstraps is the place to go. With 80 years in the auto industry, we know how to get things done. At Eddie Gilstrap Motors, we have an unbeaten level of commitment to buyers. Unmatched customer service, a wide array of new and used inventory, and various financing options are just a few of the ways in which we serve our customers. Give us a call at 877-227-9421. That's 877-227-9421. 9421 or just visit our website. And we're back. It has been one whopper of a game as we've got Tecumseh leading 43-39. A bit over three minutes left to go in this fourth quarter. But this one has been a nail biter thus far. It will be Tecumseh ball as women will take it out. So women to take it out now. Women throws it in for Wilson. Wilson looking to get to Oxley. He's going to dribble out. Give it off to Flowers. 
Flowers now throws it in the corner. Donahue with it. Donahue bounced past to Oxley. Oxley rips, puts up the shot. No good. Looks like she had a pretty clean look right there. As now Kerr drives inside, puts it up. No good. Rebounded by Lemon. And now a foul is going to be called. That might be on Crozier. And that might be the night for her. No, they called on Kerr. But Kerr now has four fouls. But that's definitely interesting to see how aggressive Waynesville came out there knowing that Crozier has those four fouls. I mean, so now Tim Kerr will check out as 23 Brumley comes back in with three minutes to go. So now women at the free throw line will be a one and one. It is up and good. Women now with six points. Five point lead now for Tecumseh. And it is good. It's now Crozier to bring it up. Down by six. Crozier with it on the right side. Crozier now tries to split two defenders. Going to back it, back it out. Now Crozier gives it off to Gordon. Gordon with it up top. That pass is tipped. Recovered by Waynesville. And now Campbell throws it in the short corner for Warner. Picks it out. This is going to be a big three-pointer by Crozier. It's no good, but an offensive rebound. Layup is no good by Warner. Tried to go with the put back there and just overshot it. And now Flowers to bring it up. Gets past two defenders. Gives it off to Oxley. Here's a corner. No corner shot. Wilson decides to kick it back out. It's kind of odd to see there. Wilson hit two of those earlier in her matchup against Trinity Lutheran, but didn't take the corner shot there. That was on 15, Gordon, her second. And now Flowers will go to the line for a one and one. If she can knock down both these free throws, it'll be the largest lead of the game for Tecumseh. But cannot hit the front end of the one and one. Wilson comes flying in to try to get the rebound. It is rebounded by Warner, and she will take it the other way. Warner stops, gives it off to Brumley. Brumley now throws it in the corner. Now it's kicked back out. Crozier with another three-point try. It is no good. Rebounded by Oxley. Oxley gives it off to Flowers now. Flowers brings it up the sideline. Kicks it ahead for Wilson. Wilson now will slow it down. Kick it out for Oxley. Oxley drives inside. Puts up the shot. It is no good. Offensive rebound for Donahue. And it's going to be blocked away by Gordon. And now Warner takes it the other way. Gordon now with it. Gordon on the wing. Throws it inside. It's going to be tipped. Knocked out of, or no, saved by Lanesville. Now we'll go out of bounds off of Lanesville. So now with a minute 37 to go, Tecumseh up by six. So now women to take it out. Lemon is going to throw it in, and it's going to be taken away as now Warner brings it up to four. Bounce pass for Gordon, who puts up and gets it to go. Gordon now with eight points. And now Flowers with it. He's going to get trapped in the corner here. And a timeout will be called. It will be a full timeout called by Tecumseh as Tecumseh holding on to their four-point lead, and we will head to another commercial break. Expertise. Resources. Commitment. At Sullivan Financial, we offer a team approach to financial planning, offering you a broader scope of expertise than you will likely find in any one person. Clients are our main priority, which is why we work to understand your unique circumstances and ultimately create a distinctive plan that provides a roadmap for your financial journey. Located in Mitchell, Indiana, they can be reached at 812 849 2670. That's 812 849 2670. And we're back. Big fourth quarter here. The Comsey leads 45 41 in this regional final matchup. About minute 24 left. And Titan, what do you think these teams need to do to come out on top? Well, Tecumseh needs to take care of the ball right here in the backcourt, and Lanesville needs to force a turnover in the backcourt right here and get an easy basket. So Tecumseh will take it out 
underneath Lenzel's basket. Have to go to length of the floor. They're up by four with a minute 24 to go. Lemon will take it out. Lemon gives it in for Oxley. Oxley goes back to Lemon. Now Lemon dribbles it up the left side of the floor, gets double team, and now a travel will be called on Lemon. And that's huge. That is a very costly turnover as Lanesville will get the ball back here. Snow, Tozer with it in the backboard, crossing half court. On the left side of the floor now, hands it off to Campbell. Campbell guarded by Wilson here. Campbell goes back left, gives it off to Crozier, he drives inside. Crozier gets all the way to the block, loses the ball on the ground, kicks it out, and now Brumley with it. Brumley looking inside, gives it to Crozier in the corner. Now back to Brumley for the three-point try. It is no good, but the, an offensive rebound is saved, but it is Oxley who comes up with it. Brilliant play there by Oxley to get the steal. It's now Lemon with it, and Crozier can't foul, so he's got four. The ball's on the ground, and now it's going to be a turnover, and now Warner's going to take it the other way. Wide open layup is good. And now a timeout will be called by Lanesville in a two-point game. Tremendous speed there by Warner, getting out in front of everyone. So now we have Lanesville trailing by two points. It will be Tecumseh Ball out of bounds underneath Lanesville's basket. So now... We've already seen that to come to turn over once here with that pressure. So do you think that uh, Lanesville will be able to force another turnover here? I mean, I think it's definitely possible. They have the speed and the good awareness to kind of get those turnovers, but you definitely don't want to try and force something here and get Crozier knocked out of the game because he's a big offensive piece that you're going to need for that final shot. So it'll be interesting to see what they choose to do here, but you don't want to get over aggressive and force one of your best players out of the game. You almost could sub out Crozier and Warner because of their four fouls in case you need to foul, but they are probably two of the better de defenders on this team. So either way, it's kind of a lose-lose situation. You take them out and you lose two of your better defenders, but if you leave them in, they are at risk of fouling out of the game, and you won't have them for the rest of the game. And this game very well could go on to an overtime period. It's a two-point game with 35 seconds to go. Well, it's definitely interesting to see here that Lanesville doesn't sub in Sonner, who's been defending Oxley all night. So now Flowers gets it into Oxley. Flowers is going to get it back. Guarded by Crozier here. Crozier can't foul. Flowers brings it up the right side. Is going to get past some defenders. Now try to dribble it back out, and the foul is going to be called. And I think... Whoever fouled is going to foul out. It's Crozier who fouls out. And that's huge. Crozier and Kerr were both there, and they both have four fouls. And now 15 Gordon's going to come in for. And that, that is a massive play there. So now at the free throw line is Flowers. A chance to make it a two possession game, and it's just a one and one. First shot is up and it is good. A very lucky bounce. This game's coming down to the wire. It is getting quite intense. So now, Flowers up the line to make it a four point game. Shot is up and it is good. Flowers with five points on the game. So now Brumley will bring it up the floor. We are at about 20 seconds to go. Brumley crossing half court, splits two defenders, kicks it out. Warner with it, drives baseline, is going to kick it back out. Now a cross court pass here. Gordon puts up a three, and they need this, and they got it. Three pointer by Gordon is good, making it a one point game. That is an insanely clutch play. As we'll get a full timeout here, and we hope you'll stick with us for the exciting conclusion of this game. 13,000 feet has a way of testing a man's soul. After all, you were never meant to take on such an endeavor. That long drop is what separates human from superhuman. And here we are, right here, right now. You're good at motivation, we're good at your insurance. Start with Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance and stop knocking on wood. And we're back. It's a close one here as we've got 47 to 46 to come see on top. The Titans, what do you think? 
Well, Tecumseh cannot turn the ball over right here. Like, any time in their season, this is the one time you cannot turn the ball over. Lanesville's going to be pressuring as hard as they can, trying to force a steal. And then, if not, they're going to foul. So, you, you want to try to get the ball to a good free throw shooter, but you really just want to not turn it over. And this one's for all the marbles here at Regional Finals. So Flowers will take it out on the baseline. Flowers can run the baseline here, gets it into Oxley, gets it right back to Flowers. Flowers now running out some time here. And now dribbling around the ball is tipped. It will be out of bounds. We'll stay to come see ball with 2.8 seconds. Lanesville was that close to forcing the turnover. So now you have to see Lanesville foul instantly with only 2.8 seconds. Flowers will take the ball out of bounds. Flowers having trouble getting it in. And a timeout will be called by Tecumseh right before the five seconds. 2.8 seconds to go. You cannot turn it over here. Now, I said last time that that was the one point in the season you can't turn it over. But now it's that point again. You cannot turn it over here. Have to get the ball in bounds and let them foul and hit your free throws and you can win this game. We very well could see them throw it the length of the court and with only three seconds to go in the game as then Lanesville would have to run it all the way down the court and probably have to throw up a half court shot if they even get the ball. It's definitely, there are definitely some interesting strategies you can uh, put into play here but I really just wonder what Tecumseh thinks is the best idea because this is it. This is the biggest moment for both of these ladies' seasons. Come, come see, coming out of the timeout, see what they drew up. So Flowers will take it out again. Looks like to come see will stack it up. Flowers with it. Is going to throw it deep. It's going to be picked up here, Warner. For the win from half court, it is no oh. good. It is short on that one, and that to come see is so excited. They earned that win there, starting off with that 7 0 run by Lanesville, but didn't give up, kept their head in the game, and now they have won regional. And number one goes down. That definitely shakes up the board a bit here. And that was an amazing game we witnessed here tonight. And I just have no words. It was spectacular by both teams. So Tecumseh comes out on top. 47-46. Now Lanesville with a great season. Getting the game ball. And they and they really did. They played great here tonight. They had they showed a lot of heart, but I mean they just to come see seem to want it more. I mean, they were so passionate. They wanted this game more than anything. And, and here they come, the Tecumseh fans celebrating with their team the regional title. This is what you watch the game for, is beautiful moments like this where the fans, the players, everyone gets to celebrate. For Tecumseh, they win this regional 16 and will move on to play in the semi state at either Jasper or Jeffersonville. And we're going to look over some stats here before we sign off. We have 
First for Lensville, who will be the runner-up in this regional. Campbell had six points. Kerr had three points. Gordon had um, 11 points. Brumley had two points. Sonner had four points. Crozier had uh, 13 points. And Warner had seven points. And for the champion, Tecumseh, McDonald had two points. Flowers had five points. Donahue had 17 points. Oxley had 14 points. Lemon had seven points and Wilson had two points. And if you would have said that before this game started that Oxley would have only had 14 points, then I definitely would have thought that Lensville would have came out on top as in the first game against Trinity Lutheran today, um, Oxley had 27 and could not be stopped. Yeah, and it's really just a credit to how great Sonner played on the defensive end and the entire Lensville team. I mean, they just, they played a great game here today and it's just one team has to lose and it just happened to be them, but to come see congratulations to them. It's been a long season, but it'll continue for them as they head off. And I'd like to thank all you lovely people for joining us here tonight. I'm Gabriel Porter. And I'm Titan Williams. Thank you for tuning in and listening to us. See you later.